Hello sweeties, this is Tigri and today I'm going to talk to you about revolution and what I mean is fashion revolution. Fashion revolution started in response of the events of 2013 when in April 24th a large building in Bangladesh collapsed. The building had five garment factories producing fast fashion items and 1138 people died in that collapse. Yes, I got the number right. And over 2000 were injured. And that's a lot of people to get hurt and die over cheap fashion. Like those people were already underpaid working long hours and then the world collapses or building collapses on them and that's not nice and there's a clear problem in this industry underpaid workers in poor conditions just is one of many unfortunately did you know it takes 2720 liters of water to make one t-shirt? That's about as much water as one person drinks in three years, I think. It's a lot of water, especially when you consider that these clothes are usually made in countries that don't have a proper water cleaning systems. So it's not very hard to see why the fashion industry is a big, big source of pollution in our world. But that's why fashion revolution is a thing. Uh, fashion revolution wants to change these things. And that's why we're asking who made my clothes. Because someone made all of these clothes that we wear. Like, they're not made by robots, they're made by real human beings who may or may not live in very poor conditions or may or may not be badly underpaid for their work. And maybe if we knew who made this, we might be more appreciative of them if there was that human connection. I don't know if you're getting what I mean, but... <laughs> and I mean seriously, most of the brands couldn't tell, wouldn't be able to tell you who made the clothes they're selling. But yeah, I drew in some facts. Uh, why I care so much is because I... Last fall I started kind of... I guess you could call it part-time studying. The course has a really long name and I don't want to translate it literally, but basically it's sustainable textile and fashion. We mostly learn to upcycle, fix and alter old clothes and also we use some recycled materials and we are learning new bio-based materials which is really cool, like some of these are in not, they're not even commercially made yet but we get to see them and try them out, it's really cool and there's a big age variety in my class and we get, we have people from outside of school come to talk to us so I've been hearing a lot of stories from people who've been in the industry for longer than I have been alive and it's, at the same time, it's really cool to hear these stories, to be able to access all of their knowledge, kind of. And it's also kind of sad because most of them lost their jobs at some point because of fast fashion industry. Like, Finland used to have a really thriving clothing industry just in the 90s. We were known to make high quality clothes that would last years and years and years. And then H&M 
and others like it came and people just wanted to buy cheap instead of good. Like, I don't know, maybe people were tired of wearing the same stuff years and years and years. And I kind of understand that because I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm a kind of person who whose taste changes over time and it's completely normal. And that's what fashion has kind of always been. But also it's not sustainable to buy new clothes every year and just throw them away the next. So all of this has made me think a lot more. Like I've always been a thrifty and DIY person because I've been kind of poor my whole life. And buying new clothes has always been a bit of a luxury, but still all of the things I've learned at school has made me think even more of what kind of clothes I buy and where do I buy them. For example, I've learned that it's better if the fabric is made of one material because it makes it easier to recycle. But I think that's enough of just talking head, let's get into my alternative. I might have mentioned in one of my videos that I like 80s fashion. Well, since then I have taken it a bit too extreme. Maybe... There's this nice little thrift shop in the city. And they have their like vintage clothes in different sections. Okay, I know some people don't count 80s as vintage, they'll call it retro, but if you look in dictionary, retro means a new item that is made to look old, so mm, I will count 80s things as vintage, sorry. Let me first show you my favorite items, I'm actually wearing one right now. Like I've maybe mentioned before, I love over big sweaters. Sweaters in general, but like oversized are my favorite. This one is really lovely. I think this was made in Italy. I've been wearing this a lot in winter. This is super, super warm. Okay, yeah. This is mixed material. There's like 15% of wool in this and the rest are some kind of synthetic materials but because it's old I don't really mind that much it does its job and it's comfortable and to my next this is another favorite Ooh, it's big butterfly like when I saw this, I went bonkers because it's the colors are just super lovely and it's like all the right kind of 80s vibes. Ah, but I absolutely love this. Uh, this was made in Denmark and this is. 70% of acrylic and 30% of cotton. Then I have two sweaters with the same pattern that I bought in completely different places in different times. This was a weird thing. It's like a month apart from each other. I found in these in the other from that same thrift store and the other from a flea market. This is the first one, it's a lovely kind of lilac, a cute pattern. This doesn't have any any kind of like information on it. When this one, this is the exact same pattern, it's just in different colors. And this says it's made in Poland and it's 100% acrylic. 
Mm, this one I have actually shown you once. This is actually a children's size, but I'm a small person. <laughs> I can't fit this on me. The sleeves are a bit short, but otherwise there's no problem for me wearing this. And this is a specific reason why I wanted to show you this. Is so firstly we have this lovely children's My Little Pony shirt from the 80s, and then we have this, which I bought a couple of months ago from one of those fast fashion stores that I said you shouldn't buy from. No, really, you, you can. <laughs> no, really. I don't want to like guilt trip anyone to not buy from them. Like I know some people don't have a choice. Some people can buy from anywhere else. But like, <laughs> this is like a couple of months. Old. I've washed this once and I don't know if I have to take a picture of something I the camera probably can't see can't really show it but the fabric in this shirt that's only a few months old looks pretty much the same that than in this one that's like 30 years old so I don't know what this <laughs> says about the quality of modern clothes. If after one wash they look like they're 30 years old. I have a couple of these shirts. The one I'm wearing is not vintage. But this one is. Yeah, it's a bit darker than what I usually wear. But it looks uh, good underneath this. And it's really comfortable. Oh yeah, this doesn't have any kind of information on it either. But it's comfortable. It's I like the kind of cut. The sleeves are a bit puffed. I'm glad I bought it even though I wasn't sure because the colors. I don't usually wear these colors. Now this one I haven't worn much yet. I bought it because I fell in love with the embroidery. Like it's, I don't know, show you this. Like absolutely gorgeous. Just ugh. look at this. Uh, this is a bit big on me. I don't know if I mind. We'll see once the summer comes if I'll actually find a use for this. It still has the shoulder pads and I don't even mind them. <laughs> Which might tell you something about how deep I am in the 80s fashion pit. <laughs> this doesn't say where this was made in but it's 100% cotton which is nice it's oh, I kind of wish I've, I'll find some use for this just because the embroidery is so pretty then I have a couple of jackets first we'll have this windbreaker <laughs> Which is just lovely. I love this. These ridiculous patterns and all over colors. And oh, just, this is just so lovely. I went crazy when I found this. Look at the hood. This was made in Finland, which is really cool. I like. I like finding pieces that are part of my own country's like fashion history. <laughs> now this was actually a bit bigger and all of the elastics had completely died. So I kind of re renewed it at school 
I made it a slightly smaller, not very much, just so it doesn't look like a tent on me. And I put up completely new elastic, so now, now it's almost like a new and I can wear it for the next 20 or 30 years. And then last but not least, we have we have this leather jacket. Now some of you might know that I'm mostly vegan, but like not 100%. And I do make some exceptions with high quality old leather products because these can last you a lifetime. I've had some vegan leather stuff in the past and it doesn't age well. Real leather just gets prettier and it kind of has more persona when it's old and aged well. And I love this like style. Like, you know, I have some punk te tendencies, so this is like... I love it so much. I'm... <laughs> I wear this like ridiculously lot. Even though it fits black and I don't really wear black. But this is like my, my huge one exception. And it's really hard to find like leather jackets in my size. They're usually made for men, which is why they're usually very big. <laughs> Unless they're new, like talking about old leather jackets, and this is really cool, really cool. Currently, my favorite combination is a sweater under leather jacket. It's just the right kind of soft versus tough that I like. The lining in this is. Pretty dirty, I don't know, stained. I probably should take this to a dry cleaner at some point. I'm just currently too lazy or I don't want to spend the money. But I'm pretty sure that will last me for the rest of my life. So I don't really, I don't regret anything. So that was my whole alternative. I hope this video didn't end too long. I recommend checking out Fashion Revolution's website which is fashionrevolution.org and if you're interested in making your own alternatives their website has instructions for that and if and when will you make your own remember to use the hashtag alternative so other people can find them and we can all enjoy <laughs> the fashion revolution together and yeah i'll see you later until then bye bye